the year-ending report. Good morning, Chairman Picton. And, um, Good morning, Chairman. C.E. Dundas, and welcome. Thanks. You have a PowerPoint to bedazzle us with, I'm assuming? Yes. Bedazzle, yes. Welcome, anyway. Good to see you here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, do you want me to... You start, Jim. Yeah. I just might... Um, might start. Uh, kura tato, nei rata mihi, kua hu mai nei, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, good morning everybody and um, it's, um, thanks for the opportunity of presenting to you uh, Hawke's Bay's tourism and its current position and I suppose more importantly um, we're before you today at the end of the second year of um, a three year um, arrangement we've had we have with this council um, we uh, were established two years ago to in a sense revive the fortunes of Hawke's Bay tourism and um, we've embarked on a journey just to do just that the first year I suppose could be categorized as um, a time in which we were establishing the organization its staff its relationships with the community uh, formulating a brand for for the region and, and beginning to set the, the direction for the future. This past year has been categorised by some, some other activity and that's um, more firmly establishing this region as a, um, a serious and strong player in the New Zealand visitor industry, um, developing those very important networks with uh, the travel trade both domestically and internationally uh, to give them a sense of security about what's happening in this region and that um, we are we need to be taken seriously. We have product on offer, and we have a we have a vibrant industry here. And the other part of that is that um, increasing the overall awareness of the region in the minds of the both domestic and international media. Now, in both of those areas, they're not they're not um, activities where you expect to get instant returns. And an example would be we've just had a, some pretty major. Um, they're called for mills, visits by international media and, and international travel sellers. Uh, it takes time for these people to go back and, and then fit Hawke's Bay into their plans. So they don't go back and suddenly we've got um, a reaction within the next week or month. Very often media reports can sometimes take up to one, two or three years even to start to feed into the, into the thing. Um, the travel trade needs time to actually factor new regions into their brochures, into their travel plans and in, in, into their planning as an organisation. So the past year has been a lot about making sure that we are in that space and, uh, and you know, I can vouch for the fact that Hawke's Bay is now taken a, as a, a really serious regional destination within New Zealand. We're on their radar and we can start to expect some um, more attention over the next little while, particularly as we come into the third year. The other, the other thing that's happened also over this past little while is that whilst we've been putting in place those building blocks which are essential for any effective tourism industry, um, we've also seen over the last five months visitor growth. Uh, and so the total numbers of people coming to the region are increasing, which is um, encouraging, obviously. Um, but in the longer term, obviously, that's what we're aiming to achieve. But you can't do it without actually, as I say, putting a foundation of um, confidence in place for the people who deal with the industry and we believe that that's been established and we're well positioned for the future. The other two things I'd just like to refer to th that have occurred in the last year is that um, Hawke's Bay Tourism has introduced two entirely new annual events uh, so that they're, they're something that the, the region hasn't had before. The first of those is in a traditional area of food and wine which uh, the region is, um, has a high reputation for. But what's happened there is that it's now established a unique event in Fork, which is at the top end of the New Zealand calendar. And it's where we wanted to be for this, that as a region, this region can stand out from any other in New Zealand in the quality of its food and wine, and it needs to, needs to be positioned in that way. Fork has done that. It's really good to see that it was um, reinforced by the, the winter event, the shorter winter event that we just ha held. Uh, so that's, that's established. 
we're in well into the planning for the next one, which will be happening this November. And so that's an annual event that wasn't there before that will start to, to, to build awareness and build visitation. And the second part was in an area which was completely new to the region, and that is cycling. Um, the Big Easy was established in, in um, Easter. The plan is to make Easter a, um, a unique Hawke's Bay cycling event for um, a particular class of cyclists, and they're the cyclists who want to do as much enjoyment as they do cycling, um, and we've got the product for that in this okay. region. So, um, And the planning for that is underway. In fact, there will be a cycling element of the uh, Fork event this November as well. So there's two other events that are, have, have been established in the last 12 months that weren't there before, so that helps as well. The final thing we've been looking at, and, and Annie will cover this off, is connections that we have within the industry. And we've been operating along a traditional way of a, a membership base. The membership fee has been quite high, $550, somewhat restricting for part of a lot of the industry who are quite small players. We've also had a, a part of the membership has been a sort of a sponsorship or a donor arrangement with some key players who were so keen to get... Hawke's Bay Tourism going that they'd put their own cash in, in and they've done that for three years. Recognising that we're going to run out of that funding and also recognising that we want to make sure that we are uh, representative as, of as much of the industry as possible, we are planning to introduce a new funding model which will be inclusive of all the industry and will allow those people who cannot afford uh, a membership fee to still participate and be members of Hawke's Bay Tourism. It would be a tiered system, uh, but it will exclude no one, and we think that that's important. And we believe that after two years of development, the organisation's in the position where we can now cope with that. We can also believe that, um, or we're aiming to make it cost neutral. Um, there's always somewhat um, some challenges around that when you think that what people have paid for before will now provide free. Uh, but essentially the tiered membership structure will mean that those who want better listings, those who want access to our database, and those that want to promote their own businesses will pay for that. But you won't have to pay to join the organisation, to be part of it as a member, to attend our functions, and obviously uh, to get the information you need to, to improve your business. So on all those fronts, we feel that's good progress. Um, we're looking forward to this year. We think that's the time when a lot of this work that's been foundation work will start to come to fruition and uh, hopefully with a, a good tailwind um, we'll see even better results. So I'm going to hand over to Annie who's now ready. <laughs> Is that seamless? <laughs> Thank you very much. Just grab the microphone there please, Annie. Sorry, you're being recorded. We need the... Uh... Ah yes, nice and clear. Um, do you want to flip to the next slide? Shall I give you the, the finger? <laughs> um, so just on the current statistics and where we're tracking, um, we've had a, a not a bad year actually, and what we've seen is that um, our stats have been held up by private stays. The commercial stats are down 1.6% year in, but the household private stats are up 4.3. So it's given us a pretty good year end result. And interestingly, the commercial sectors actually had three months of good growth, March, April, May. So they've seen a much improved result compared to the year before. Um, Visitor spend, importantly, is up, and I'm going to show you a graph in a minute, and I mentioned this last time, the regional tourism indicators, which are the new indicators that all regions are using, which capture spend on fuel, spend on transport, spend on accommodation, and Hawke's Bay is tracking exceptionally well. So I'll show you a, a bit of a graph on that. Um, Thank you. Um, I'm just interested to, to know your private stays. Does this encompass house lets? Uh, no. So it'll, we it'll still be... aren't capturing yep. the number of visitors that are, are actually renting private houses. No. Which I think is, is actually, from anecdotally, is, is quite, quite... Substantial. Substantial? Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah, it is very substantial. It's it's a difficult one because many private ho or holiday homes aren't, you know, they rent them for two weeks a year and they sort of probably don't even consider themselves in the tourism sector. But there are 340 holiday homes in Hawke's Bay. So, um, and there's opportunistic characters at Christmas who rent their houses. And so there's, there is a lot that happens in that space that isn't currently captured in our data. That's why the spend data is so important because you still get to capture how those people spend their money when they're in the region. So that's why we really want to use that as a much stronger measure. Um, the tourism dynamics have obviously changed over time and we are seeing a shift to more experiential accommodation and how people um, view that is through a holiday home, you know, staying by the beach or staying in an idyllic location versus perhaps staying in some of the other accommodation that's been available traditionally and easily to book online. It has changed. The internet obviously has enabled that change hugely as well and we talked about this at the last council meeting. There's just vast choice and consumers uh, are very savvy with how they search and seek and use sites such as TripAdvisor to determine where they, where they intend to stay and obviously five years ago we didn't have those options. So the dynamic of how people are consuming travel is very, very different and I'm sure many of you, wherever you travel, probably um, take on those sorts of um, search um, ideas and bits and pieces when you're looking online for, for holiday options. Um, the environment's still quite tough and we are in a, we're in our off season so um, you know, to have a good result for May is good. June, uh, we've had anecdotal feedback. It's going to be a tougher June, um, but we had a pretty awful June, July, August last year. So we're certainly hoping to improve uh, on those three months of last year. So those are just some of the initial statistics. But overall, the industry is feeling more positive, And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the events and things we've been going to, just to give a flavour of where things are at. The finger, sorry. Um, so just in terms of the numbers, and these, um, I've written this so small I can't read it myself, um, there's just over a million uh, visitors into the region, and this is just counted as the commercial stats and the private stats, so it doesn't count the holiday home um, characters. Our 3.38 nights is length of stay, and what we've seen is we've perhaps had slightly less visitors in these sectors, but they're staying longer, which is obviously good from an economic point of view. Um, 3.6 million visitor nights are spent in the region, which is up, and mainly held up by the private stays. Uh, and then the contribution to the economy is 433 million for the year end May. Question to you. Does that 120 spend per day, does that include the cost of accommodation? Yes, it does. And it's, aver it's averaged out, so that's why it does appear to be lower. But that's a domestic travel survey stat that's a national stat. Just, um, and, and a question from me, the uh, 433 million excludes cruise travel. Do we have any idea of what that might contribute? Um, the average, there's a new economic report coming out for cruise, but an average cruise passenger spend in New Zealand, we don't have it for Hawke's Bay, is about 16 to 1800 per passenger per visit. Um, the, the, the free and independent traveller sits at about 2600, so they're still making a sizeable contribution um, into the economy. Just on that, Mr Chair. What do they spend their money on the cruise passengers? Um, excursions, obviously, coffee, food and beverage, um, knickknacks if they're buying things, if they're yeah souvenirs and those sorts and of things. And that's over what period of time, please? Uh, well, if as long as they're in port. So the cruise the cruise season runs October through April, and we'll have 109,000 cruise passengers through this coming season. So it would per visit is sorry is that that's all over New Zealand. So is that like one passenger, one ship, that's the total of what they spend you're talking about? Oh, that's, that's an average. That's what's been the averaged average out. Total over that whole period? Yeah. Not per day? No, not per day. So per do you know... Per visitor, per, visitor. per trip. Do you yeah. know what that is per day? No. You could probably work it out, but... <laughs> but some cruise visits are 14 days, some are seven. I mean, it depends on how long the ships are. In is the there country. an average length of, of cruise? Oh, the m mostly New Zealand's lucky in that we are a, a destination that has multiple. Most countries only have two port visits on a an itinerary. We have up to seven, so New Zealand's actually a little bit different from other regions. But it is, yeah, seven days would be the minimum. 